Later. And straight, buddy. Straight, straight, straight. Yeah! Does that look familiar to you? <laughs> it does. Seemed like yesterday? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> she is a seven-time Olympic gold medalist, a combined total of 16 world championship and Olympic medals between 1991 and 1996. The most successful American athlete at the 1992 Olympics, winning five medals. And not only is this the 25th anniversary of her Olympic win with the Magnificent Seven, but she celebrates another, and in her words, maybe true milestone this month, her 10th year being cancer-free. Welcome to the morning show, my friend and Olympic champ, Shannon Miller. Hey, great to see you. Good to see you. So, it, I don't know where time goes. 10 years, I just blink of an eye. It is, it's it crazy. is unbelievable. So we've got these games that are finally going on yes. after a year-long delay. They still call it the 2020 Olympics, but it's, it's 2021. So these athletes, they've dealt with that delay. Mm -hmm. They've got COVID tainting the games. You know all about, you know, dealing with you know, delays, dealing with injuries, dealing with things that, that get in the way. But these athletes, they train. And, you know, they, they've got a certain mindset. What do you think is going through their minds right now, knowing that they've still got COVID outbreaks and things? How do they best compete and get through everything? I think athletes are built for adversity. It's what we do every day. I think a lot of times we remember the gold medal moments and the good times, but it's important to remember the struggles along the way because sports is adversity. It is dealing with injuries and, and delays and um, plateaus and learning new skills and falling and failing and making mistakes constantly. And so this is just, um, another issue that the athletes have to kind of overcome, another challenge. And so I think for these athletes that are going out there to compete, they, they're already an Olympian. They are now an Olympian. So check the box on that. Now they can go out and really focus. And I don't think you think about the what ifs. You just completely focus on what you're doing. What I always thought was, okay, it's the same four events. I go in, the balance beam is still four inches wide. <laughs> it's the same routine I've trained a thousand times. So whatever else is going on around me, just focus on the present and what I need to do today. And, and even though you're focusing on what's going on there, maybe on the mat or with the vault or, or whatever, you know in your mind usually, you know, that your family's there or perhaps your best friends, but this year, you know, the families can't travel. So at the Olympic trials, you were what, you were 12. In 91, you were just about 15, and the youngest Olympian right now is 15. Their families can't be there because of COVID. Uh, because of COVID. Do the other Olympic athletes and, and the trainers, do they become family in their support system? Well, I think, well, in my first Olympic trials, I was 15. You had to be 15 well, that year, in 92. Like, I think, so was it um, in 89? 92. Yeah, it was my first Olympic That trials. was your first Olympic. Olympic but trials. But there was yeah. something in 89. I, that might have been an Olympic sports festival. That's what I'm thinking of, the Olympic yeah, sports yeah, festival. Yeah, so that's yeah. separate from the Olympic Games. It, it has the word Olympic in it. But, um, but I was 15 at my first, and that was very young. I mean, I was a baby. And you leave, uh, you know, to go overseas. You uh, work out, usually for two weeks ahead of time. No family, no friends. It's just Absolutely. you and the team. So they are your family. I mean, your coaches. Um, you have this whole team with you all of the time. And I think knowing that my parents were coming was helpful, but I competed back in the day where there was no internet, there was no social media or cell phones. So you had no contact. So you really got used to just knowing you're out there to compete, you have support, it's going to be there somewhere, <laughs> but you couldn't necessarily see it. And I think um, these athletes, they've got the technology where they can consistently talk with their loved ones and that will be helpful it's not the same thing but it will be helpful i think it's probably going to be hardest for the parents and family members because they're sitting watching on pins and needles and i think often that's the most difficult another thing that won't be the same you win the medal and you know this very well having won so many medals <laughs> you get up there on the the stand and, and your national anthem is playing and you lean over and a member of the ioc drapes that medal around your neck can't do that because of covid does that make it any less I don't think so. I mean, I think an Olympic medal is an Olympic medal, <laughs> regardless of how it gets on to you. Um, but I think, you know, when you think about the Olympic medal, it really is, it's, it's beautiful, it's wonderful, but it is a symbol of all of the hard work and the sacrifice that you, happened by you and so many others um, to get you to that point. So I think how you get the medal is probably less important than getting the medal and just being an Olympian. I mean, these athletes have worked so hard, they can just enjoy that moment. You are the most positive person I know. You overcame injuries as an athlete, as an Olympian, overcame cancer, as I mentioned, 10 years ago. A lot of local families have kids who are over there uh, young adults who are her competing. 
give them the, the old chin up. <laughs> You know, keep to the best. You know, I think, you know, for all the athletes out there competing, I would just tell them, first of all, they know how to compete. They know what they're doing. They know how to train. They know how to compete. I don't need to help them with that. What I would say is you have done the work. Now it's time to go out and just enjoy that moment. Because it's here and then it's gone. And it's gone. It's so quick. Yeah. But then you can relive it years later. <laughs> That's right. Over and over and over on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Which we just saw Shannon's, you know, from many years ago. Did you play in your heads a lot of time? Um, I see it a lot of times. Yeah. But, you know, it's all still up here. But my body's not so much going to do it anymore. <laughs> oh, I bet you can still do some of those things. Always great to see you. Thanks so Good much for coming you. in. Thank you.